We're going to talk about the Texas Rangers and how much fun why this- are you look, Why are you blocking me because out? Because you're looking at me with this big old smile on your face and I'm just waiting for you to be like, hey, better than being dead, huh? Like, I'm just waiting just for Mike's something Friday like that. That's just Mike's Friday smile face. Yeah. Mike's just happy to see you, man. He's just, okay. It's Friday. He's, he's excited. I love looking at you. He's looking forward to Oxnard. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? What's it? You, you, right. you hit a John Gray. Are we talking John Gray? Are we how, talking Robbie Margot? How much Margot Robbie oh. is? How much fun is this series going to be? And then what is the fan configuration right. going to look like? Because if you talk about fans that will travel or fans that are everywhere, yeah. this feels very much like the Cowboys of Major League Baseball in terms of their Dodgers fans everywhere. I was talking to a buddy of mine and he sold his tickets to the World Series. This is going to be really weird because the Dodgers celebrate this place tremendously. In 1988, they won the World Series. In 2020, they won this World Series in Arlington. So it's it's a it's a place where they look at and kind of go, man, this is a really cool place because this is where we won our COVID championship. Yeah. And so I think going back to that time, people were Dodgers fans buying those tickets at four times face value because of how many Dodger fans there are, how important it is to them. There's a lot of Dodger fans that do live here in the Metroplex and it's a historic team. I'm going to say, as great as the Ranger fans have been, this is going to be a 60% Ranger fan base and a 40% Dodger fan base. For this series? For this series. It's all sold out. These Ooh. tickets were bought, a lot of these tickets were bought before the season started, before yeah. the Rangers were good at baseball, before you knew how good they could be. So I'm looking at this. When they do the Let's Go Rangers that's the Dodgers chant. If you go to Chavez Ravine, if you go to a Dodgers game next Sunday, that is their deal. Let's go Dodgers. And it is all the time. They don't need the music. They don't need them to help them out. They are doing let's go Dodgers a lot during the game. And so when they do that, Ranger fans just know. 20,000 people at that game are going to be rooting for the Dodgers and rooting hard for the Dodgers and their Dodger chants are going to drown out the Ranger fans that aren't into the game. And so I think you're going to actually hear at times you're going to go like, I think there's more Dodger fans here than there are Ranger fans. That's going to, that's not going to be the case, but they're going to be more passionate about their team because a lot of these Dodger fans aren't flying in from LA. They live here. This is one of their opportunities to watch their team play where they live. So they are going to be very passionate about their team these next three days. Is that... And there's nothing you can do to Mike. Like Mike's talking about, those tickets have been sold. And yeah, yeah, Rangers fans yeah. can't go, well, I'll change that tonight. I'll show up there and I'll be rooting louder. You got the tickets are sold. They're sold out. Does that... Okay, make sure this question makes sense is whenever we talk about home field advantage, I get the fans are a huge part of that. But a lot of times you hear players talking about, hey, I'm able to like sleep in my own bed and go through my own routine. How big of a difference is it knowing that instead of like your usual, let's say 90-10 split or whatever the case is, it's closer to your 60-40 And I, I also have another question to kind of go with yeah, that. Yeah. Do, do all baseball teams stay at the same hotel when they come through uh, Arlington? I assume 90%. Okay. Every once in a while, you'll have teams that stay at a different hotel than the one that the teams usually stay okay. at. I won't say which one just because I think it's pretty commonly known, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't care about that, don't listen, and then you don't want all those people to know where the visiting team stays. All right, so that being said... It actually brings a lot of energy to even the home team that during this game, there's going to be a lot of chatter throughout the game. So the quiet moments of the Ranger game are actually going to be loud moments for the Dodger fans. So there's going to seem like a lot of action and actually in a weird way, this is how to activate a home fan base that sometimes isn't as active into the games at all times is to have the other team cheering, if that makes sense. To yeah. have to have people near you that are going crazy for the Dodgers actually makes a person go, I should maybe cheer a little bit more for my team because, man, these Dodger fans are really cheering on their team after a strikeout. I should maybe cheer on our team after John Gray gets a strikeout tonight. You know, like, 
Uh, and I know John Gray's not pitching tonight, but you just look at it and you go, okay, it's going to be from a player standpoint, so much electricity and energy in the building. This is going to feel like a playoff environment. The The Tampa series was great. A lot yes. of people showed up there, but I was there uh, Tuesday night. It didn't feel like a playoff game. Yeah. It felt like a very well attended regular season baseball game with good energy. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, this is going to feel like playoff baseball to the players. You're not going to manage it like a playoff game, but the energy in the building tonight is going to feel like a playoff environment, which is going to really energize the players. It doesn't mean they're going to play better or worse, but they're going to feel the energy of that crowd tonight. Now, the Rangers have won six straight, which... That's a good winning streak, right? But not a change the world winning streak or anything like that. Just to show how great this season is. Not been. where Chris Pratt led him to like twenty straight in Moneyball. Yes, as the, yes. Scott Hattieberg as the yes. first baseman. That's... Ignore Eric Chavez and the uh, MVP of the two thousand one season, Miguel Tejada. Ignore all the pitching that they had. It was Scott Hattieberg. <laughs> he did it. He did it all. Is this is the longest winning streak the Rangers have had in four years? And that just shows you six games. Yeah, yeah, six games. That just shows you how bad it's been. And I realized 2020 was shorter, it, but this is the first time since 2019 you've been on a six game winning streak. I'll make it even crazier, Corey. Do the, it. The Oakland Athletics has had a longer winning streak than the Rangers this year. Son of a oh biscuit my eater. gosh, that's true. That gum it. Is that crazy? That is crazy. I mean, I, I hate saying it because the Oakland Athletics, hey, they're getting hey. paid major league money. They're on a major league team. But the Oakland Athletics somehow won seven games in a row this year. And the thing is, if you win tonight, Tony Goslin is a very good pitcher. I know he's not having his best year. But if you look at, if you go and you beat Cleveland, who was winning that division, yeah. and then Tampa, who was winning that division, and the Dodgers, who right now, Arizona is struggling. So it doesn't look like you can knock the Dodgers out even if you beat them all three games here because Arizona is just not winning enough. San Francisco, San Francisco has been playing is, really well. Yeah, San Francisco is playing well. Is I just look at it and go, what a winning streak, too. It wasn't against Oakland and Kansas City. Like, if you played Oakland for four and Kansas City for three and you won all seven, it like, well, dang right, you won all seven. You have more wins than both those teams combined do. So this is a tough six-game winning streak. And then something, Corey, I wanted to throw in as well is have you started actively rooting for Shohei Otani trade for a totally different Rangers-related reason? Yeah, Mike, my feeling here is that if Shohei Otani gets traded uh, he to the National League, We'll be uh we'll be fortunate, and that Corey Seager will have a chance to win American League MVP. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Because and and I think that Shohei might even not be eligible for the the National League MVP because uh, Acuna is in the top the front runner oh, there. Oh yeah, but but he wouldn't have spent enough time in the National League to accrue that. So God. I I kind of want if Seager I'm a to voter, get a shot. If I'm a voter and he gets traded, let's just say on July 30th, so he would have yeah. another approximately 10 days to rack up a few more stats, I might still vote Otani MVP. Oh, and I know that sounds bad because you would have August and September. He wouldn't even be in the league. And at that point, his let's just say 30, he has 35 right now, I believe, home runs. Let's just say he hits two more home runs. He, he gets to 37 home runs. And his pitching stats would stop where they're at right now. I still might go... I can't, I can't not give him the, he yeah. deserves an MVP this year, right? And I, Acuna deserves an MVP this year too. And I'd be like, for Corey Seager, can he do enough in these last two months to still take away the Otani MVP if he does get traded to a National League so team? I never thought of it. What if Seager got to 25 home runs, 100 RBIs, 340 batting average, and a 1.0 OPS? I hate saying this. Oh I do. Oh my god. That is great. I still think I would vote Otani if I had a vote. Holy smokes. So Corey, we were looking at the USA. What would you, who, who would you guys vote? Just if, if you just gave those stats and if you, he just went away, he, I would vote for Seeger. The, the Mets or whatever. I, I would vote for Seeger just because I thought the only way I would not vote for him is if he got hurt. Well, if he is not putting these stats together in the National League, it sucks, but I think I would vote for somebody else, maybe. Yeah, I'm voting for Seager for sure. Just because I'm, you know, I don't want Seager to win. I like Corey's. 
I understand this. <laughs> That's like when, when CJ Nikowski asked me who's going to win the uh, American League Central. And I said, ah, Cleveland, they drafted me. And he's like, that's your best reason? And I'm like, I don't have a very good reason here. I'm not a big uh, Cleveland's a good team or Minnesota's a good team. So on the USA Today MVP ladder, they have, of course, on the American League, Shohei is first, then Bo Bichette, then Luis Robert. But four and five are Texas Rangers. Corey Seager is fourth, and Adolis Garcia is fifth. So, again, we've talked about what a great season this has been for the Texas Rangers. They might have two top five MVP candidates with Adolis kind of sliding in and maybe taking the spot that Marcus Simeon previously occupied. So, go Rangers. Can they possibly sweep a first-place team for the third straight series? Um, I'll lean no. Yes. That you hold on, he said, Can they? Oh, can they? Of course, yeah. they can. Yeah, can they? Well, yeah, anything Will can they? happen. It's a game. Will they? Can That's they tough. win or can they lose? One of those things is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. What about that one all star game? Yeah, well, and I guess <laughs> we found out there's been random ties in regular <laughs> yes, season games. Yes. <laughs>